Ladies and gentlemen, something new for you today. As you may be noticing, Alistair is not introducing this because it's not, in fact, a podcast, is it, Alistair? Nope. Oh, man, that really sounds like you've got him fucking tied up at gunpoint, mate. <laughs> I mean, probably, let's be honest here, I do, because I decided today that I wanted to do something, and I've got these two with me to help me. Well, one help, one subject to, I suppose. Yeah, Alistair is actually tied up at gunpoint. Absolutely. It's you know that childish Gambino video, This is America. I'm like I'm posing in like that kind of like arse out kind of gun forward way right now in front of him. He's also frozen in that bit where he can't it looks like childish Gambino's both uh, both uh winking in the middle of trying to let out a massive shit and having a stroke at the same time. And that's the face that Hugh is permanently stuck in at this point. Can I be honest with you? I've never watched uh, This Is America. I've just seen that one clip where he's doing the pointing gun because it was in a meme. Ah, uh, just everybody. I'm I'm blinking in Morse code. Oh wait, you can't see my face. I was gonna say, <laughs> yeah. click in Morse code. But I also have access to the editing suite, so I will just be taking that out. Fortunately for you, mate, this ain't live. So you may be wondering why I've got Alistair tied up and why Ben is helping me. That's because this is a brand new series, Badly Explained Anime. This is where you clap. <laughs> Alistair, <laughs> clap, God damn it! I can't clap, I'm tied up. Good point, his hands are tied up, God damn it. You should have thought this through, Hugh. <laughs> I really should have thought this through. No, I've been coming up with some ideas recently. Uh, recently, off the back of my I'm going to ask a random question at the end of a podcast thing, and that's what I'd like to do now, I've also come up with a brand new series of badly explaining anime, where one or two of us will find someone who has never watched or even been subjected to too much of an anime, and try and explain to them just what is that anime, try to explain the plot to them, um, inevitably rather badly. So you, this is why, Alistair, we brought you in here today, because me and Ben are, I'd like to say, it's probably quite big JoJo fans, or at least yeah. I'm a big JoJo fan. I, I'd, I'd say I'm a pretty damn big JoJo fan. Uh, and as a result, Alistair, can you confirm to us you have never watched an episode of JoJo? Uh, I can confirm that. I've never watched an episode of JoJo. <laughs> So, what we'd like to do, Alistair, is try to explain to you today uh, JoJo's parts 1 to 5 in detail, and then give you a vague hint as to parts 6, uh, 7, and 8. Yeah, there are 8 parts. Um, 8 parts, Alistair. Um, because those are not on uh, in uh, animated form yet, so we're not going to spoil too much of them. Just a basic, vague overview. Uh, of which I believe Ben will be taking charge of, since Ben has actually read the manga, I think. Whoa, mental. How have I done so? <laughs> I haven't, to be fair. I just know what happens. <laughs> <laughs> so, so, Alistair, before we start, what do you know about JoJo's Bizarre Adventure? Um, I know that... Let's see, what do I know? I know that it's a bit wacky. Uh, it is, in fact, a bit bizarre. Uh, and random. Uh, we but, just say bizarre. At, I know that uh, I think is it part three onwards stands become a thing and yep. it becomes persona esque. <laughs> yep, it becomes the basic overview of what would later become a lot of the persona games and pretty much anything based around that. Yes. Do you know the names of any of the protagonists? Um, isn't one of them called Jonathan Joestar? Yeah. Yes. yes that's the first one. Uh, and they all have names, I think, that can be shortened into JoJo, and each part is a different protagonist. Yeah, except for when their names don't get shortened to JoJo, but we'll come on to that. Thank you, part five. Uh, so, eight parts, Alistair. Part one. Uh, part one is Phantom Blood. Uh, in the animated form, it's only eight episodes long. It was the original one. It is the one with vampires. It also introduces our main antagonist, Dio. Your boy Dio. Your boy Dio Brando. Now, I've seen him in the things called memes. One of those mysterious things. Indeed. Dio is, in fact, the Kono Dio Dart guy. So, uh, so, so I, th I think, I think, rather than than giving names and things, we should just get into our terrible descriptions. Got it. So, uh, part one starts off with the world's worst and fastest horse crash. Yep, yep. Multi-track drifting does not work on horses. No, as it turns out. And then the world's worst thief ends up getting his son involved in a multi-million pound industry. 
Man, I'd, I'd describe it as, you know, philanthropist kindly adopts loving orphaned child. <laughs> yeah, pretty much. Uh, s- proceeds to have brotherly spat with adopted brother. Which results in vampires. No, which results in the hypest rugby anime <laughs> of all time. Uh <laughs> The the evil protagonist who is so evil, they had to show you how evil he was, so they had him kick and then kill a dog. Because can you think of a more evil thing to do? I know, steal Jojo's girlfriend's first kiss. That is also what he does, and that was where the Kono Diodar meme comes from. Our main antagonist finds a mask that when you put it on, turns you into a vampire. A mindless vampire, except for when it doesn't. Because, yeah, actually, you're a mindless vampire all the time, unless you're the antagonist, in which case you get to retain your mind and also just become an OG. Uh, yep, you also have the ability to bring people back from the dead, except when you can't. You also have the ability to walk up a chimney as a house is on fire, uh, then get burnt alive but survive. Uh, you also have the ability to use all of these vampire powers and then forget them when you come back again and get resurrected for the sequel. That's That's pretty accurate. He then gets murdered and sunk to the bottom of the ocean. Yep. Part one. That's part one. <laughs> oh, uh, are uh, you following we, us so far? We forgot. We forgot what the most important part of JoJo uh, learns to fight vampires using the power of breathing. Oh, I forgot. Of course, yes, the power of breathing. Uh, because Alistair, as you know, if you want to defeat vampires, you breathe really, really well, and that allows you to harness the power of the sun. Oh, no, 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 let's uh, fuck that part. You just breathe really, really well, and then when you hit a vampire, it disintegrates. Yep. And that's why, that's why posture is so important, kids. Absolutely, and you can harness the power of the sun, apparently. I, I mean, I was more going along the tactics of, I mean, you could breathe really, really well after you've had a garlic dinner, and then breathe on them. Oh, shit, that's probably what it is. That'll be the, bo- that'll be the boosted version for when they eventually bring it back. That's what it is. Fucking... <laughs> that's what happens. Zeppel- Zeppeli genuinely just, like, occasionally would rub garlic on <laughs> fucking shows. Yeah, yeah no, you're, doing, you're doing well, mate. Don't worry about it. He's just like, oh, you're doing fantastic. Your breathing technique's amazing. Why, thank you. Oh, no, he's in a lake. He can't breathe. And <laughs> Zeppeli's just there like, oh, no, he's in a lake. The garlic's washed off. <laughs> A lot of people skip it because they're stupid. But how could you skip, you know... It, it's basically skipping the best sports anime that's existed. Exactly. And you'd miss the uh, slice-of-life tale of two brothers um, from different worlds coming together to love each other and to hold on to each other in their final moments. Yeah, become one, if you will. Become one. It's very, it's very touching. It's a very touching tale of two brothers learning to get over their differences and become one. Part two, Alistair, is my favourite part. Alistair, what is the greatest, greatest reason for being an antagonist you can think of? Um, greatest reason for being an antagonist. You, when you think about antagonists and you think, right, what sort of things makes me an antagonist? Is it you want to do world domination? Is it you want to, you know, find the girl? Is it you actually want to just save the universe? What is the greatest reason to be an antagonist? There aren't enough breadsticks. That'd be pretty good. I'm afraid you're wrong, Alistair, because the answer is, I want to be perfect. But he is perfect. Yeah, but he's perfect (laughs) to us. Uh, Part two begins uh, around 40 years. No, it's not 40, is it? It's 20. 20 years after the events of part one and follows... Uh, Yep, after after the world first experienced true brotherly love. And has (laughs) the protagonist with the power of running away. Yep, uh, the, our protagonist's special ability is uh, not only this time uh, is someone rubbing garlic on his hands constantly, um, this protagonist has the ability to be a big old coward and to guess what people will say next and use the confusion to run away. The antagonists this time, Alistair, are, are the greatest antagonists of all time. That's right, rock men. And don't forget, don't right. So, so I would describe this one very simply. I would describe this one as uh, American overgrown, ridiculously muscular child decides to stop running away to join the Nazis in yep. fight in fighting Amazon gods. 
Yep, and that is part two. It also features the greatest chariot battle in all of anime. Oh, it also has the strangest turnaround from the Nazis being the villains to a few episodes later, the same Nazi being brought back as half robot and being a hero. Because German technology is the greatest in the world. <laughs> to the point that it is described that he died bravely defending the fatherland in World War II. He dies in Stalingrad, quite literally. And that is part two, Alistair. It's my favourite part. It's brilliant. His favourite part is when the Nazis were here. It, beca- it has the, f- the fantastic finale of Man Becomes Bird and is shot to the moon. Man Becomes Bird Squid Squirrel and <laughs> flies into space. So basically, uh, yeah, the, what what we get there is the Nazis um, get space flight going. Yep. Um, and they create the first proper satellite in orbit of uh, the universe. You might call it a car. I would call it a car, the first space car. <laughs> oh my god! Before Elon Musk, it is. Alistair, you do not understand anything that you're saying, do you? No. I'm so sorry, Alistair. <laughs> I feel. <laughs> We're making so many references that are just going over everyone's heads. I'm just, I'm just gonna be like, if I eventually ever watch JoJo, I'm just gonna be like, oh look, there's the Elon Musk space car thingy. <laughs> <laughs> so, Alistair, have you, have you enjoyed your time with the uh, sun-powered garlic breathing? Um. Yes. It's Let's forget gone. about it! Get about it! It's gone! Get out of it! Forget about it! It's all about tarot cards and personas! Yeah, part three! It's the part that everyone loves, except for people who realise that it's actually not that great. Part three is the culmination of brotherly love returning to try and spread this love onto others, to try and show people this is what we could have become. However, the ancestors, the Japanese ancestors of this brotherly love are like, NO! We can't have that! We can't have this going on! So they go to destroy it, and they go to break them apart, and to tear them apart. And so they set on a long, arduous trek, all the way from Japan, all the way to Egypt. Destroying locals as they go. Destroying locals as they go, sinking a poor orangutan only wanting to drive his ship and spy on underage girls, and censoring all of the underage smoking they possibly can. Until eventually, they defeat the world and brotherly love using the sheer power of acquiring the same ability (laughs) that the villain had about 20 minutes after the villain did. <laughs> and, get, and getting slowly but surely better at it because of the power of protagonist. Uh, whose power in part four he will he will conveniently have not used for around 10 years, and so it's terrible again, so it can't just be used to immediately win the day. Part four! Yes. Part four! Local office worker simply wants to live quiet life in quiet town while killing people. I, I, I was going to go for local uh, local townsman just wants to live quiet life while going on thwart patrol. Yes! Yep, that's bang on. Local David Bowie lookalike. A lo- eventually is tragically struck down in his prime by a by road an ambulance. ambulance. In the meantime, high school students have hijinks and cheat at dice with an alien. That's part four. <laughs> that is, in fact, part four. You th- Alistair, everything we are saying is correct, by the way. We are not joking with you. We are I, mean, not- I, I, don't, I don't doubt anything you're saying, considering every single description I've ever heard of JoJo is always this nuts. So unless everybody around the planet who's ever seen JoJo has somehow miraculously agreed to describe the shows in such a weird and bizarre way, uh, it either is that, or they are actually like this. So part four as well, Alistair, is when our manga author first started having genuine problematic um, memory issues. And as a result, part four is exceptionally inconsistent with most of its story, including setting up an entire thing for the finale and just forgetting it existed, forgetting that what that uh, a character has the powers they have, forgetting 
pretty much everything about certain places and characters and completely and totally changing the personality of one of its characters because the power he had was so overpowered there's literally no reason for him to not just immediately win part five, part five the love child of brotherly love shows up in order to take down the mafia by becoming the mafia Except for the except for when he forgets about that and instead just decides to start fighting the world's most fancy looking guy, not in a suit, but also kind of in a suit. Includes the most confusing superpower that no one can still agree on, and also torture via dance. It's it's a part, including everyone's least favorite character from part three returning, except this time they're crippled. <laughs> yeah, this time they're in a wheelchair <laughs> and have one eye and less legs. Uh, but their stand becomes so overpowered that it can be beaten by being tripped over. Wait, how can you trip somebody over with no legs? No, no, no. He's not being tripped over. His stand gets tripped over because his stand gains them fantastic power of walking in a straight line and making people swap personalities. Because apparently that's the ultimate power. It also ends with the greatest showdown between the ultimate stand and the other ultimate stand, where the ultimate stand's ability is to erase time, and the ultimate ultimate stand's ability is to erase erase time. Yep, pretty much. The best way I have to describe the, the villain's ability is they have 10 seconds in time happen, then all the effects of which have happened, except that 10 seconds didn't happen. So if, if you walk up some stairs, then the 10 seconds will disappear and you'll have just appeared at the top of the stairs. But you'll have never walked up those stairs. No, it also includes such things as if, you, if they are going to punch you, if they punch you in those 10 seconds, but you move, they punched you, but because the punch no longer happened, you don't feel the effects of the punch. Because you moved. Because you moved. And you're now there because everything that happened in those 10 seconds are gone. They also introduced stands of personalities because fuck you. Part six! Part six! Um, oh, wait, what final thing about part five? You know how they're all called Jojo, uh, Alistair? Yeah. Uh, how do you get Jojo from uh, Giorno Giovanno? There's no hey. J's in his name. <laughs> they're all G's. <laughs> It's he's yeah, Joe. He's Go Go. Uh, as far as I'm concerned, go -Go. wait. It's Go Go. Wait, wait. But isn't it like, isn't it Goji? Isn't Gogi? Oh, it's Gogi. <laughs> Gogi. There you go. Gogi. That's Gogi. The name. <laughs> Gogi. Part six. Part six. Woman in prison decides to incite frog riot while local pastor simply wants to resummon Christ. Using uh, using brotherly loves alien. That's the entirety of part six. Sorry, here's the entirety of part six. Doesn't fucking matter because the final stand has the ability to rewrite all of history. Yeah. Boom, part six. <laughs> rewritten time. Back to the 1800s for everyone's favorite part, which is genuinely apparently really, really fantastic. And, and as I've been described it, horse race to find Jesus. No, no, no. Yeah, part seven's the fucking best. Part seven. A cripple and a man that can blow bubbles race against the president of America to find In a train. Whole... To find the bones of Jesus to save America. Alistair, oh, here's a question for you. You are sat at a dinner table. There are six seats. Between each of the seats, there is a handkerchief. When you sit down, do you take the right or the left handkerchief? Uh, hang on, I need to think about this. That's a very difficult decision. It is a very difficult decision. It's basically Sophie's choice. Hmm. This is when I'm trying to remember where the napkin is on a table when you sit down. I, the, the Wrong! Right one. Whichever one the first person picks is the one everyone picks up. That's why you're the winner. <laughs> uh, this Wrong! Also, hey! No, part, part seven also includes the greatest stand of all time, which is simply become a velociraptor. Yep, dinosaurs. Does, does not make you immune to a train. Part eight! <laughs> part eight! <laughs> Part 8, main character is more confused by the plot than you are. Part 8! <laughs> part 8, Alistair, you, rem you remember the David Bowie lookalike from Part 4? Now he's combined together with a guy from the Navy. Part 8.
I still don't know what the plot is. <laughs> no one knows what the plot is. I don't think Araki knows what the plot is. Plot A! Uh, Alistair, I hope you've enjoyed our quick go-through of the uh, of the JoJo series. Do you understand JoJo a little bit better now that we have described it to you in, in excruciating detail? I think I understand it a little bit less. <laughs> <laughs> and that was the plan all along.